I was assigned as a security guard with the midnight shift at a very large Omaha warehouse when I was a young man. This building was mainly used for storage and it was huge. We as security personnel were tasked with hitting several stations inside this building on the night shift, and this required that we did a lot of walking. There would always be two personnel assigned to the warehouse at night, one patrolling the outside perimeter in a car, and one inside the warehouse on foot. Being outside, sitting in the comfort of a car was obviously the more desirable of the two. I was working a Wednesday night. I was about half an hour into my shift. I would start the shifts walking around for about an hour, just surveilling the place before sitting down in one of the security offices. This room had some low-budget, ancient camera system that at the time was impressive technology, but it only had two screens because there were only two cameras in the entire warehouse, one in the northeast corner and one in the southwest corner. That's why we couldn't just sit on our butts in the security office our entire shifts and had to actually patrol the place. This was a shared warehouse for some tech companies and a lot of expensive equipment was held here, hence why two security guards would have to be there every single night. The warehouse layout was similar to that of a regular grocery store. There were like 10 to 15 aisles and one intersecting aisle that cuts between the other 10 to 15 in the middle. I was still making my initial rounds around the place when I saw all the way down at the end of the aisle I was in something at the end section. It was like this white thing that kind of resembled the shape of a head, and it was poking out from behind the end section. Mind you, it was so far away that all I could make from it was this white looking object. I elevated my slow stroll to a moderately quick speed walk, and halfway through the aisle, the white thing disappeared behind the tower of boxes. This confirmed my fear that it was a person, and that I wasn't alone in there. I now ran to the end of the aisle hoping to see the other night guard walking around or something. As I stood in the southwest corner of this giant warehouse, I looked up at the camera in the corner, and I was pointing in the direction of the thing I just saw. I looked in that direction, and there it was again, at maybe the seventh aisle, that white thing I saw earlier. Now it was a lot closer, and I could make it out to be someone's face, as I feared. But it wasn't the other security guard. It was this extremely pale, ghoulish looking face, they once again slowly hid their face behind the tower of boxes. I walkie-talkied the other guard on duty, and he radioed back that he was in the car by the back section of the parking lot. He said Roger that he'd be here in five. Getting off the phone with him, I was nervous to approach the aisle that I saw the person's head. Even though this is exactly what a security guard's purpose and job is, you never actually expect or anticipate seeing any action. I took a deep breath and ran to that aisle and stopped at the end of it to look down it. The person wasn't in sight. I figured they must have ran for it. So I ran halfway down hoping to catch up to them. But I stopped when I smelt this horrible putrid odor. It smelled like a dead rotting carcass. I followed the scent until it became overwhelming and I found the source of it. It was coming from this big wooden box that was different from the rest of the boxes. I pulled the lid off the box and inside was a dead body laying in a pool of blood. The most shocking part of it was that it was missing a head walkie-talkie to the other security guard again and yelled at him to call the police and report a dead body in the warehouse. I said this all while running as fast as I could to the back exit of the warehouse, struggling to get enough air. I threw up the second I made it out the door. I ran to the other security guard's car and sat in there with him gasping for air. He was still on the phone with the police, so I took the phone and told them whatever the other security guy didn't. Given the nature of the situation, they sent like five or six cop cars and basically had the entire place surrounded. The body was loaded into an ambulance, and for a good chunk of the night, police were in the warehouse doing forensic work. Perhaps the weirdest part of all of this was that when trying to go back to the video footage captured from the night before, the footage cut out for about three hours in the middle of the night. There was no explanation for this happening. I've thought about this night for almost my entire life, basically. I don't believe in ghosts or anything, but I don't really have an explanation for this. I've thought about some far-fetched possibilities though, like that whoever the murderer was, was in the warehouse that night and was holding up the severed head of that body, hence why it looks so pale and ghoulish. In fact, it gave me chills just now thinking about it again. Several years ago, two friends and I heard from a mutual friend about this creepy abandoned warehouse or furniture store that was only a few miles from my house. One night while on a drive, the three of us decided to check it out. We parked at a Walgreens a few hundred yards from the warehouse and started walking towards it. 
As we got closer, my friend, I'll call him Jim, kind of chickened out and stayed back while me and my other friend, I'll call Mark, continued on. As we approached the right side of the building, it became very obvious that this place had been abandoned for a very long time. The front entrance was boarded up, and there were vines and ivy growing all over the building. Our mutual friend said that the only way in was through a busted-in wall in the back. We went around back, and sure enough, there was a broken-in narrow section of wall we could get in through. We stepped in, and it was completely dark. We couldn't see our hands in front of our faces, so we turned on the flashlights on our phones and looked around. There was trash and debris everywhere on the concrete floors. We were in what appeared to be the main room of the old store, and it was huge. An entire football field could probably fit in this room. We could even hear an echo when we talked. We started looking along the walls, which were covered in graffiti. The graffiti was littered with what must have been gang symbols as well as profanity as you would expect. What was really unsettling, though, was that as we moved further along the back wall, the graffiti was getting more and more disturbing. One of them read, Kill Yourself Tonight, then the graffiti was getting satanic. There were tons of inverted crosses, pentagrams, 666s, and violent scenes depicted. While this stuff was creepy enough, it wasn't the worst of what we saw. Towards the end of the building, there were some steps leading to smaller rooms. As we shone our lights on the steps, we saw a large, dry pool of what was probably blood all over the steps. This deterred us from exploring the smaller rooms beyond, so we headed to the left side of the room. As we were walking, our lights caught something hanging from the ceiling. We got closer and saw what it was. It was a noose, still hanging from one of the rafters. It became very obvious that the people that come to this place use it for very evil purposes. After that, we decided we'd spend enough time in there and headed for the hole in the wall we entered through. We got outside and saw that there was another, smaller building-slash-warehouse behind the main one. Despite the freaky things we saw inside, we were still curious and decided to check this one out too. One thing that was very odd was that there was a small room in the front of the warehouse that had no doors, only one window. Inside was a large inverted cross hanging from the decrepit ceiling. We came to the left side of the warehouse where the large garage-style entrance was. This building was similar to the first one. It was one large empty room with tons of trash everywhere. There was more disturbing graffiti. However, there were these holes at the base of the walls that were really odd-looking. We shined our lights down them but couldn't see the bottom. What were these for? We had seen enough at this point and headed back outside. It was then that my friend Mark got a call from Jim. As he was talking to Jim, his face suddenly changed to a downright horrified expression. I said, what's wrong? What he said next sent a chill down my spine. Someone else is here, he said. Before we could even turn to run, a white truck peeled around the corner at an alarming speed heading right towards us. We started booking it towards my car, and as we got around the other back corner of the building, we saw another black truck parked alongside. But we kept running as fast as we could, and thankfully the three of us made it back to my car. We got in and peeled out of there. I don't know what those guys in the trucks were there for, or why they chased after us, but based on what we saw in those buildings, it wasn't anything good. Thankfully, we never found out, and we never returned to that place. In my mid-twenties, I used to be a party planner and event coordinator. I was basically in charge of throwing dope parties for this record label group. I'd have to rent out venues for a night or weekends which would allow us to host our events in these places. Usually we wouldn't pay until after the event and the landlord or owner of whatever property we were using would take a cut of the profits. There was this one time that my group rented this big warehouse for an entire weekend and we would be hosting parties Friday and Saturday night. Once the place was rented out, I had to do a lot of setting up which included setting up tables for bottle service, setting up portable bars, and a DJ stand. A lot of work would go into these kinds of pop-up venues, but they were always extremely profitable. My buddy Jack, who was also on the event planning team, was helping me on the Wednesday before the party weekend. He drove a truck full of equipment to the empty parking lot that the warehouse sat in. I was having trouble figuring out how to get the power to a certain part of the warehouse activated. I looked for any kind of electrical panel or circuit breaker box, but I was having trouble finding one. I gave the building owner I dealt with a call and he picked up almost right away. His name's Carter. He told me exactly where to go for the electrical panel that would turn on the specific lights I was looking for. He directed me to a door that had an exit sign on top of it, but it wasn't on. 
Through this door, I was in a very short, very narrow space with a door on one side which I presume led to the outside, and then a half flight of stairs on the other side. I was supposed to go down this half flight of stairs, which led to another tight space with a couple doors. This room was hard to explain without just seeing it for yourself. I'm 6'4", so I had to bend down a little bit just so my head wouldn't hit the ceiling, that's how cramped it was down there. This level had very dim nightlight kind of lights hung on the ceiling. Dim but enough light to navigate just fine. I found the electrical panel, and Carter told me exactly which switches to flip. Then I shut the panel door and turned the key to lock it, even though he told me to just leave the key in the lock. I thanked him and our call ended. I heard a loud and obvious buzzing sound that would be going off in spasms. I followed the sound of it to a door, leading to a pitch black room. Pulling the door open was hard as it scraped against the concrete floor. There was this red light in the top corner of the room that synchronized with the buzzing sound. When the buzzing stopped, the light would also turn off. I was trying to figure out what it was, but it didn't make sense. I stepped deeper into the room and noticed whenever I moved, the light would turn on and the buzzing would sound. When I stood still, it stopped. I don't know why, but I was creeped out, so I went back to the doorway of the room. I took one more look inside, and the red light turned on again, lighting up the room with this eerie red glow. I decided to call Carter and tell him about the potential problem with the light and the buzzing. He told me calmly that the light was a motion sensor, and the buzzing was because that one in the basement was busted. I asked what he meant by motion sensor, and he explained that there's at least one in every room in the building, as it's part of the security system. I looked back into the room, and the light was still on. I asked what could be setting it off in there, and he said he had no idea. And that's when I spotted it. There was someone, I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman because of the long disheveled hair, sitting in one corner of this room half hidden behind a pile of old boxes. Their eyes were the most noticeable feature because of how goddamn wide they were open. The mouth was like a half smile, and they were moving their arm in a manner that was as if to tell me to come here. I know it took me a few seconds to describe this person just now, but I was literally screaming at the sight of them in under a second. I slammed that door shut and ran back up the stairs and out that exit door. I told Carter we were leaving and not using the warehouse anymore. I didn't ask any more questions after that. I didn't care, it was his problem. I yelled at Jack to get everything he could back into the truck. We collected our stuff as quickly as possible, loaded the truck back up, and left. I didn't even bother locking the door to the warehouse, I just wanted to be far away from there. I still today don't know what to make of it. The Carter guy seemed so weirdly calm about Mike telling him about a deranged looking person in the basement of his warehouse. Thinking back, that light was probably going off because of that person sitting in the corner waving me over or doing whatever the hell he or she was doing with their arm. It was a truly nightmare inducing, horrible experience.